Right, welcome back to another video. So, I've got this little forklift axle to sort out. So, <clears throat> problem is, that's kingpin that goes through there. The bearing at the bottom has disintegrated and destroyed itself. It's also destroyed the hole. So that's a bearing that's supposed to fit into there, but obviously the hole needs to be a nice smooth tight fit. Otherwise, if it's not, it just cracks in the bearing casing and then just destroys itself again. So what I've got to try and do is sort this hole out. So there's also the hub to sort out because it's broken all the little rollers up and mashed them into there as well. So there's them to dig out, and that to fill back, fill back up. And I'll have to mill that flat again, I think. So the top hole, <clears throat> the top hole's all right. It still has the the outer bearing racing, so I'll have to get that out. But the top hole is all right. Doesn't need anything doing with that. I'm not quite sure what the best way to tackle this is yet. Now, obviously, I could line bar it, but whether I could get my bar set up well enough just to line bar one hole and not not line bar that one, because the pin, you know, they have to be dead parallel with each other. Or whether I could run a reamer down through the top and ream the hole out, ream the bottom hole out. The top hole will keep the reamer in the right line, the right direction. And the problem with that is I don't have a right size reamer. That's that's an inch and a half, but I need a 38 mil, so that's just to say too big. But then if I was to line bar it. I don't have a bar small enough to go through there, so then I'd have to make a smaller bar for my line borer. So, yeah, not quite sure what to do with that yet, but I'll tackle this hub first. Right, so I've taken the wheel hub off the stub shaft just to make it easier to work on and I've put some masking tape over the shaft where the bearings and that go just to protect it. So I'll have a dig in there now and try and get them rollers out. First time hitting that then, a bit flew out and cracked me straight in the goggles. So it's very important to wear your eye protection. That would have been quite bad if that had hit me in the eye. I've got that cleaned out there for the die grinder. There's a few more bits need cleaning out. Uh, I'm going to fill up with weld. I might do it with TIG just because it's a bit more precise and a bit of practice. And then once I've got it filled up with weld, I can run the reamer back. I have a 30 mil reamer, and that's 30 mil hole. And run the reamer back through the other side to get rid of the excess weld. And I'll have this to fill up as well. And then I can just 
face, mill that off flat again. All right, so I've got that ready to TIG now. Um, I'm just going to TIG a little bit on the top. I'm going to wear a little bit on the top first and make sure it doesn't go hard or anything daft. Um, and then we'll do the inside. So I'm pretty new to TIG welding, that's why I say it would be a good bit of practice for me. And it, you know, it's more controllable. Won't have so much to machine back out again. Right, so I've got that built up with a TIG. I think I've got enough there to to uh, cover it all. So I'm going to put it on the milling bed, mill that flat with a face mill. It's, it's got machine surface on that side, so I can sit that face down on the milling bed, clamp it down, skim that off, and then I can run the reamer back through from the other side. Right, so I've got it mounted in the mill now. I'm just going to gently mill off the top until I get down. So I'm just touching the original like the original face. I've got the piece flipped up the other way up now and uh, the bottom side is the one I milled flat. I've got the reamer in, 30 mil reamer. I've got it lined up so the reamer fits down nice. So I wouldn't normally ever run anything straight onto the deck of the mill but because the reamer's got a flat bottom and it's putting up again that, it shouldn't do any damage. It's just easier doing that than having to set it up on any blocks or anything. So. We'll run the reamer through now and just take them end welds out at the end. If there's a bit that it's left because of the leading edge on the reamer, I'll maybe just die grind them out. Well, it wants a bit countersinking anyway, so the countersink should take out what the reamer doesn't get.
And so that's got most of the way through. I'll just do that last little bit with the diagram and then just countersink it a little bit. Uh, done no damage, no damage at all to the bed. So it's all right. So I've got that bit done. Now I just I have a big handle that I made to go on the reamer. So I just finished the last bit off by hand, and then I've just countersunk it a little bit so the pin fits. Pin fits nice. Just a little bit there where I didn't put enough weld on, but it won't matter. Um, that's the bottom side, so there's no weight. You know, all the weight's pushing on the top side, so. I should do, do for that bit. I've just got the axle to sort now. So I'm gonna make a start on the axle now. First job is to get this race out. Um, while I've still got the TIG welder out, I'm just gonna put a little weld all the way around the inside of that race. Then when the weld shrinks, it should come out, and then well, I can and I can use a weld to to hit against as well because it's hardly anything there to to hit against without damaging the outer bar of the hole. So we'll have a go at that first. So I've been round it with a TIG, but I've run a weld all the way around, it still won't budge. So I've been and got some more oxygen, I ran out That's I ran out of oxygen, that's one of the reasons why I tried doing it with a TIG. But I have done it like that before, run a weld around it, and it, you know, they've come out fairly easy. So anyway, we'll try the gas torch to see, see if it'll come out. That's got him. Right, so I've got that out. Um, I've just ordered a reamer to do this job rather than line bar it, so I can run a reamer through for the top and do the bottom one. Um, so what I can do while I wait for the reamer to come is clean all this lot up, build up with weld. I'll have to grind it back down because I haven't got any way of getting in there and milling it flat. So, because it's the bottom, there's no weight on it anyway. So I've got the hole cleaned out with the die grinder. I've got the top. I've just ground the high spots off. I've dug in a bit where the shitty bits were with the die grinder again. And then I'm just gonna 
fill them bits in with a TIG welder now. I'm going to use a TIG just because it's easier to get the metal where you want it. You, know, you can put more metal in place, some places and less in others, so just seems easier. And then I'll weld on the inside of the hole with a MIG. I'll run all the way around, build it up. And then when the new reamer comes, I can reamer it back through. And it should be back to the right size. Right, so I've got that TIG ground, and um, if I'd have done that with a MIG, I'd have had a lot bigger beads to, to grind down. So, although it's not very neat, all the metal is in the right place. Might need a little bit more in there. But I'll uh, turn it on its side and I'll fill, fill around there now with a MIG. Using little MIG, because big MIG, the torch is a bit big to fit in the hole, so use little Takaki inverter MIG. So I've got that welded all the way around. I'm going to tip it the right way up now and grind that back down. The ream has finally arrived. I've got the axle set up in the radial arm drill. Now it's taken a bit of shimming to get it right, but I've got it so the reamer is a nice loose fit in that hole. So hopefully that top hole will keep the reamer in line and ream the bottom one out the same. Now, what I'm hoping it doesn't do is move sideways a little bit and then the reamer make this all bigger, but I've done this before and it's worked, so hopefully it'll work again now. So we'll give it a try, see what happens.
Right, right so I've got the bearings put in now. They're a good tight fit as the bottom one. Top one was a little bit looser, but it's still perfectly acceptable. And the pin fits nice and bang in line, so should get him back up and running again with his little forklift. Then obviously that little stub shaft that I repaired, that goes in there like that. And there's a there's a thrust bearing to go in there, but um he can reassemble it. So yeah, that's that repair done. So another forklift axle came in today with the same problem. Uh, so that'll be that'll be a future video, but that one will be to line bar through because both holes are knackered on both ends. So anyway, that's a future video. So yeah, that's it for this video. Um, thanks for watching. I just wanted to say thanks to everyone for subscribing as well, because the channel has grown a hell of a lot faster than I ever thought it would do. Um, we got to a thousand subscribers in under four weeks. So we got monetized in four weeks, which is unbelievable to me. So yeah, thanks everyone for watching. Um, and I'll see you next time.